XLOOKUP function in Excel is better than the VLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP, and the INDEX MATCH. So let's find out how to use it with 5 examples from easy to hard. Starting off with a simple example, and over here you can see that we have a list of employees and the revenue. And so we want to find out for Sergio Perez how much he's brought in in revenue. And you can download this exact same data set in the video description for you to follow along. So under the revenue cell over here, we're just going to go to equals and type X lookup. Once you find it, hit the tab key there to activate it. And the lookup value is what are we looking for? Well, we want to try to find Sergio Perez, comma, and the lookup array is where can we find him? Well, we can find him in the list of employees. So we'll go control shift down to select that area, comma, and the return array is what is the answer that we're looking for? So in our case, we're looking for all of the revenue. So we'll go control shift down there to select that as well. And that's all we really need for the moment. So we'll close up parenthesis and hit enter. We can check that this number is correct. As you can see right here, we have the same revenue for Sergio Perez. So that's all looking good. And this XLOOKUP function replaces the VLOOKUP as a faster and better alternative. If we go inside the formula again by double clicking, you might have noticed we have a few other options like the if not found, match mode and so forth. And don't worry, we'll get into them later in the video. But for now, suppose we want to change the employee name to Lando Norris. You'll notice that the figures change dynamically. That said, it can get a bit tedious to have to put the surname every time. Like Verstappen over here is a difficult surname. And so let's try to find a way to only add the first name and still be able to get the answer. That's where the second example comes in, which is the XLOOKUP with the wildcard feature. So over here, back to the Excel file, now in the second example, we just want to find the employee max and find the revenue. So really just looking at the first name without the surname. So let's see if that's possible. We'll go to equals X lookup, hit the tab key there and the lookup value is going to be max. That said, it's not just max because there's also a surname. So what we're going to do here is put the ampersand and then put up in quotations an asterisk like so. And that's all we need. This is basically saying that whatever there is after that first name, in this case after max, can be ignored as that's enough of a match. So the lookup array is where we can find max. Well, we can find him in the list of employees here. So control shift down, comma, and the return array is the answer. So we want all of the revenue figures, control shift down, but we're not quite done yet. We also have one more part. So we're gonna put the comma. It's not the if not found, we're not concerned with that, comma. It's actually the wildcard character match. That's the one that we want. This is known as the wildcard there. So we'll put a two there, close a parenthesis and hit enter. So now we're getting the revenue for Max Verstappen, even though we only have the first name. Same thing if we put Carlos here, you can see we get that number. The examples we've looked at so far are simple because they only have one criteria. Now let's look at a scenario with two different criteria. Over here, you can see that we don't just have the employee like we did earlier, but we also have the month based on these columns here. This makes it trickier as the X lookup only allows for one lookup value. That said, there is a workaround. So let's take a look. Down over here for revenue, we're going to go to equals x lookup again and first the lookup value is going to be straightforward it's just going to be the employee comma and we're going to look for the employee in that same range that we've been looking at so control shift down comma and this is where things get a bit different as the return we're going to add a second x lookup in there to be able to detect the months so we'll put x lookup hit the tab key there the lookup value is just going to be the month that we have. You can't see right now, but it's basically the I3, comma. The lookup array is where we can find it. Well, in the list of all of these months, comma. And the return array is not going to be just one column, but all of the columns with data. So control shift down, control shift right to select them all. We'll close up parenthesis. That's going to close the first X lookup. Close it again, this time for the second X lookup, and hit enter. 
So it says that for Sergio Perez in February, it's around 7,000. And that seems to be the case right here. Same thing if we change this to April, you can see that figure changes to this one. So it's all looking good. This replaces the index match formula and it's much easier to use as well. Later in the video, we'll learn even more powerful features of the X lookup. But first, if you wanna learn about other Excel formulas, check out our Excel for business and finance course using the link in the description below. We won't just go over formulas though, we'll also cover formatting best practices and shortcuts, building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and more. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Now, what happens in the scenario where we don't want an exact match? Well, that's where the approximate match comes in. This makes sense for something like a bonus, where you only pay it out after a certain threshold, so it's not really an exact match anymore. So let's take a look at an example of this. And you can see over here that we want to pay bonuses depending on how much revenue each employee br brings in. So if it's greater than 1,000, but less than 4,000, it should be that 10%. And if it's greater than 8,000, it should be at that 20%, for example. So let's take a look at how we can go about that with the equals X lookup. Hit the top key there. And the lookup value is what we're looking for. We're looking for the revenue, comma, and we're looking for it in this range over here, which is going to be our set of criteria. We'll hit the F4 key to lock that. So just press the F4 there, just to put the dollar signs. So when we drag this down, this table here is not going to move down and it's going to stay fixed. Comma, the return array is all of the bonus figures. So control shift down there, because that's basically what we want as the output. We want to find out what percentage of bonus we should give them. And we'll put the F4 key there as well to make sure that's locked. Comma, nothing for the if not found. So we'll just hit a comma again. And in the match mode there, we want it to be an exact match or the next smaller item. So this minus one, meaning that if it's say eight, less than 8,000, then it's going to default to the lower percentage. Let's go ahead and put the minus one there, close up parenthesis and hit enter. So that's for the first one. And we can double click here on the side to drag this down and just to see if it's working okay. So this person made more than 8,000 so they get a bonus of 20%. The person below that made between four and 8,000 at 7,000. So they get that 15%. So it's all looking good. Now, what happens if we have multiple columns of data? Does the X lookup still work there? So let's take a look over here. And you can see that we're not just looking for one answer before we've been looking for the revenue, but now we're looking for three different answers, the profit, the new clients, and the ratings for all of these employees here. Now, it would be very tedious to have to go one by one and make a new XLOOKUP formula. So let's see if we can actually work on all of them at once. So we'll go to equals XLOOKUP, hit the tab key there. The lookup value is, well, we're looking for that employee, comma, and we're looking for him within all of the names here. So control shift down. And let's remember to lock this with the F4 key. So we have those dollar signs, comma, and the return array is, well, we're looking for the profit, right? That said, it's not just the profit. We also want the new clients and the star rating. So we'll simply select all three columns, control shift down, control shift right. And let's lock these as well with the F4 key. We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter. You can see how that spills over for the new clients as well as the star rating. And we can just drag this down too. And you can see that everything updates dynamically. So we've got Alex Albon over here down towards the bottom and his numbers seem to be correct as well. The X lookup is a very powerful formula, but it does have some limitations. So let's take a look at an example of when it doesn't work. Over here, you can see that we have the profit for each country that we want to try to calculate. Now for Spain, for example, we have it repeated three times. 
So we want to get the sum of the profit for Spain. That said, with the X lookup, it would only be able to find one of these matches. It wouldn't be able to sum them. So that's where it doesn't quite work. Let me know down in the comments what formula you think works best. In my case, I would probably go for a sum if. So equals sum if. Hit the top key there and the sum, the range here is basically, well, we're interested in Spain and all of these countries, comma. And the criteria is this specific country. So the country of Spain, it's under F3 right now, comma. And we would want to find the answer within all of this profit range. So that's what we want to sum basically. We would close up parenthesis and hit enter. So basically the sum of these three should be the same as that number. To learn how to use more if formulas like the sum if, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.